Well, here we go. Third try. The wind was switching and of course I'm still a rookie. up the lights. Don't know why the glider's not coming up. Came up so easy the last time. All right, well, that's the end of it. See how much this is going to cost. Well, it appears as though I didn't get the glider. I got the net. Ruined a prop. This is getting to be an expensive sport. Three hundred bucks. That shouldn't have been in. That shouldn't bend. Must have bent just enough. It caught the net. All right, I got to get clean. Okay, well, there was where the strike was. Now, how this gets to there. Yeah, how? Okay, to give some perspective on that. I've stood on it and I bent it. And of course, it got some net here, but this net, I mean, it's tight. And there's no, the net wouldn't have been coming back. Hmm. Now, my thinking on this is that the rolling resistance was pretty high over there. The grass was thick and green, deep, the ground's a little rough, and I've got small diameter wheels. And you combine that with getting a line, you know, the glider had gone to the left. I uh, went to make a little bit of a correction, gave a little bit more throttle as it was coming up, and just whoop. And I can stand on this and push on the, and pull here and uh, there there had to have been uh, these frames should be designed so that that can't happen hmm. and it has to do with the just the flexibility that's inherent in this uh, matrix frame so I don't know what I'm going to do whether I want to spend another $320 and then uh, be more careful that I'm on a surface where I can get rolling um, so that I don't have to use as much throttle. But uh, that doesn't do a lot for my confidence. I mean, this thing is probably still just as strong as could be here. But I'd have to buy another one. You know, and there's a hundred bucks by the time you got the thing shipped here and pay the VAT and everything from England. I'm not blaming it on them. But John, if you ever see this, you know, this or anybody else, just, uh, I don't think the matrix frame is something that should be used for something like this if you're not going to be on anything but the, the perfect surface for taking off. And you certainly can't make any mistakes. We'll see. If I were to buy another frame out of Canada, I mean, that's a couple thousand dollars. I've still got to figure out how to mount the tank and get everything else mounted. And uh, then you'd have to buy a trike. And you're looking at another, you know, maybe three grand for that. 
so I, I have to ask whether it's worth it or not. And I, this tip is not so bad. I could have repaired it, but this tip has a split right here. And it could probably still be repaired, but you know, I even thought about take a mold off of the things. <laughs> so when it happened, I could fix it. I don't know. I've got all winter to sit on it. <laughs> Mamma Mia is trying to stay out of the picture. <laughs> I'm going to mention one more variable, and that was the really the only thing that changed on the glider, and that's that I had twice as much gas in it, three times as much. Instead of a liter and a half, I had five liters, five and a half, approaching six the first time I ate a prop, and that additional weight right there could be enough to, again, um, impede the ground roll and just not let it get started. Because, you know, thinking about it now, if I had somebody else here watching, a lot of experience, they would have said, well, you're not getting the ground roll started. So the glider comes up, and quite frankly, with a long delay, not like before where the trike would move right away and encourage the glider to come up, and then start rolling quickly. And now it comes up, and then the trike just kind of sits there so I give it a little more gas and then the glider starts falling back I make corrections and that's when the prop gets eaten so. well let's see how it goes this time I didn't back up I got less runway Tried to correct that. <laughs> 